Welcome back to the Burning Hammer podcast. I'm Mark Izzo. He is Dylan O'Brien, and we are your hosts. And for this episode, we will be giving you our review along with talking about everything that happened at the biggest party of the summer, Summer Slam. However, before we get into that, we've got uh, two announcements to make. Number one, we have a new design for a t-shirt dropping on Wednesday. So if you're listening to this on Monday, that is in two days on Wednesday. We have a new design that's going to come out on Wednesday. We are pretty pumped for it. It's it's one of uh it's one that we kind of thought of and we wasn't sure of like how we would actually go about to actually designing it, but we ended up being able to to make it and we are super stoked for it and it's a shirt that anybody uh could wear even if you don't watch wrestling. And then we have some more exciting news because we just launched a Patreon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Patreon is, basically you can pay monthly um, for a different amount of subscriptions. Basically, creators will go on there uh, and you can pay anywhere from $1 to 10, 15, 20 bucks a month to get like exclusive content just for that. Uh, it's kind of like OnlyFans, but for like creators. So we launched it $1 a month. Uh, basically, what you're going to get with that tier is you're going to get all of our content ad free and you are going to get a bunch of stuff early. So you'll get the podcast early, you'll get interviews early, and you will get our weekly YouTube videos early. Plus, we will just be on there a lot. Uh, I've We've been on there already posting a few things and it's been a lot of fun. And plus, if we ever um, pick up anything like a new wrestling figure, or if we find anything at an antique store or a thrift store or anywhere where we're at, we will exclusively be putting it on there. Now, I say that because I just bought two new shirts. And so I will be unboxing those in a video that will just be up on our Patreon. And so if you want to see what two t-shirts that I got, you got to make sure to hop on our Patreon. That's a great way to help support us along with buying some of our merch. Link in the description for the Patreon and for all of our merch. Uh, dollar we're a month. super pumped to be able to do this. Dollar One dollar. That's it. Twelve bucks a year. Nothing's a dollar anymore. Uh, dollar a month. You can. And yeah. And the content will only grow as a. Uh, as time goes on for the Patreon, uh, we will can guarantee we will not be adding less stuff on there as time goes on. So uh, there will only be more and more. So uh, hop on now, get in for a dollar. Um, and then when we blow up and we have to raise the Patreon to, uh, to we have to raise the Patreon a little bit. Then all the people who hop on now and have been around since day one, they'll get grandfathered in and they'll stay at that one dollar tier. Uh, but uh, you know what I mean. So uh, hop in now when uh, when strike while the iron is hot and hop yeah, on the Patreon I mean, for a dollar. Literally one buck, you can reach into your couch and find a dollar. Um, so let's start the SummerSlam discussion because this show was absolutely packed to the brim with action a lot of things happened um so i guess first off we can briefly talk about the man they call jelly roll he had a live performance he sang the national anthem and then he just performed his one song um dill i i feel like i don't know i thought this the his concert I thought it was going to be in like the middle of the show as kind of like an intermission type thing. I think yeah, it would have worked better like that. Um, I don't know why they didn't do it like that, but I don't know. It felt like it was a little long. It, nothing too crazy. I think it was just for the the Jelly Roll fans out there. Yeah, it was a, it was so fun. I guess if you're a uh, Jelly Roll, you're pumped. Yeah, it, it was fun. I think, uh, like you said. I thought it was a little weird that it was like right in the beginning of the show. Um, it seemed like it would have been a great like little break in the middle of the show. But uh, regardless, yeah, kicked it off with a uh, "God Bless America" and then Jelly Roll's hit single, and then uh, and then we hopped uh, right into our first match. Mark, we sure did, and this was one where I don't know if I said it on the 
podcast last week for our predictions, but um, kind of like leading into the night, well, I was telling my uh, my friend that like I felt that was going to kick off the the show was Liv versus Rhea, and like I don't I didn't read any of like the match um, order spoils or anything like that because I thought that match was going to kick off because I and we both thought that Dom was going to turn on uh, poor Rhea Bloody Ripley, and that's exactly what happened. Um, Dill, why don't you talk me through this match? Your th- let me get your thoughts on it. Yeah, man. So uh, we got um, Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan, uh, the first one-on-one match in this uh, new chapter that has definitely not ended. Uh, so you got it, it was first off, it was a, a real solid match overall, um, and it's so good to see Rhea back in the ring. Um, we had uh, that couple instances where she like uh, it seemed as if her shoulder popped out of place and then she like ran and popped it back in that was pretty cool that was a badass moment um so then we get to uh, a point where um Rhea gets a chair right and Dom uh Dom grabs it from her um and says you can't win like that which is he is right and he is right in that instance she can't win that way. She can't win the title that way. Uh, so he he wasn't lying, and he he might have been actually doing her a favor in that instance. But uh, later on, you see uh, the chair uh, makes its way back into the ring, and uh, Dom sh- shows a little bit of distraction to the ref, and uh, Liv Morgan is able to hit Oblivion. First off, might have been the best Oblivion. Um, I like it. Do you agree? I thought that was like so sick. I thought Rhea took it so yeah. well, dude. Yeah, it's because like Rhea knows how to take that like a face bump like that or like yeah. a DDT kind of thing. She definitely knows how how to take it and how to make it look devastating. I was so when he slid it in the ring, um, I was a little confused about if he was sliding it for Rhea or Liv, but then you can kind of hear him like scream Liv's name. Then she hit it on him. But I think, like, the thing that confused me a little, which, like, I thought that he did turn on Rhea officially, like, in that moment. But I was kind of waiting for, like, the announcers to kind of, like, say something about it, which they didn't because they were obviously waiting for Dom and Liv to, like, French shortly after that. But I think, like, I thought they were going to be like, oh, did he try to hand it back to Rhea or did he try to give it to Liv, which they didn't do, which is... I guess it's fine because I don't know how many people like, did you, were you immediately like, Oh, he just sided with live. Like, I knew. In that moment? I knew. Cause it made yeah. no sense. Like why he was yeah. distracting the referee and then live hit a move. You know what I mean? So, uh, True. I was, I was, um, yeah, I was pretty, pretty much. And then of course we got the confirmation when he, um, when we got oh, a, that's a nice confirmation smackaroonie right. between uh Liv Morgan and Dominic <laughs> Mysterio. Um Liv Morgan is still your women's world champion. Um and she has a new boo and his name is Daddy Dom. Um so uh Mark what where I mean we won't get fully into the judgment day because we still have some more stuff to talk about regarding uh that so we'll uh get into that a little bit later on but um what do you think uh do you think this calls for an immediate rematch in in Bash in Berlin uh do you think where do you hmm. think they go with this at this point uh where do you think they go with this as far as the match is concerned uh for uh, Rhea, so, bef- with uh, Rhea and Liv. So it's kind of tough to like figure out because you have Bash in Berlin so shortly after SummerSlam. It's like three weeks away, roughly. Um, mm-hmm. And then you don't have anything in September and then you have Bad Blood. So I don't know. I it we first have to decide how many times are they going to wrestle before Rhea wins it back. I feel like we're probably going to get a big feud. So I think that they could probably, I think the first match is going to be at Bash in Berlin. And I think Liv will most likely retain 
at Bash at Berlin, and then I think Rio will probably get her win at Bad Blood um, to kind of draw this out a little longer instead of having Rhea and Liv and kind of like instead of having them wait a little longer like I feel like there's too much hate for them to not wrestle like as soon as they can and then try to like wait um for like almost two months until bad blood in October so I think we get the rematch bash in Berlin um I think they'll probably go back to like five matches which next week we'll probably will give our early match card predictions for bash in Berlin Mm -hmm. um so be on the lookout for that but yeah uh, an early one that I'm going to go with would probably be Rhea versus Liv in, in the rematch. Um, obviously, Dom will probably help Liv get that win again. But when do you think? You think they're doing it at Bash? You think they're going to hold off until Bad Blood? Um, if not at Bash, then I think the second match is going to happen on TV. Because, like you said, I think the feud's a little bit too hot to like wait it off. Um, so yeah. I think they're going to have to do it. Um, and then, like you said, it feels like, it feels like this, this definitely has to end at Bad Blood. Uh, it feels like this is one of the feuds that they decided probably to bring back Bad Blood for. Um, so, uh, I think that there was a lot of feuds that were really hot at the time that they probably, when it went into the, uh, idea of, um, you know, which pay-per-view they wanted to bring back and stuff. So, um, but yeah, like you said, I, I think it. If not at Bash, then I, I think it happens on TV because it definitely uh, it can't wait. Yeah, it, it can't wait at all. So we then got a nice little segment backstage with Damian Priest obviously being pissed off. Um, and then he's roughing up Finn a little bit. Uh, wanted to know if they were behind it. Once that once we got the Dom turn, I felt pretty good that Finn was going to cost Priest the match, which obviously we said in our predictions, we kind of nailed uh, hit the nail on the head with our predictions with with the Judgment Day stuff. Um, and, and then what was next? Sammy and Braun? Yeah, so next was Sammy and Braun Breaker. Um, a real solid match. Um, and then and, and the right result um, we got, in my opinion, uh, which was a new Intercontinental Champion. Uh, Braun Breaker uh, is your new Intercontinental Champion. Uh, my my main complaint with this match was just that they should have given him some more time. Um, they really, this match just wasn't very long. Um, I think there was, I think if they took a couple minutes from a, other matches maybe, and then just like gave them an extra five minutes, um, I think it would have gone a long way. Uh, it just felt like a little bit of an anticlimactic uh, end to sammy's title reign in my opinion um but with that being said uh i agree with it i agree with the call i think it was the right call and uh and the the short time that they did that they were there um they delivered they gave us a they gave us something really really solid um throughout and uh congrats to braun breaker because uh triple h said it in the press conference but it was uh i think a lot of people already knew but uh, SummerSlam was kind of like the birth of a star on the main roster in Braun Breaker. Um, and I think we're probably in store for a pretty long IC title reign uh, with him. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he holds it for a year, um, honestly. So uh, I definitely ex- would expect him to hold it till at least Mania. So um, let's uh, let's give it up for Braun Breaker, man, because that, that was uh, it's. Which is another funny thing. I wasn't that off. Um, Brown Breaker was one of my big predictions or people who I said should have potentially beaten Gunther uh, for the IC title. So I wasn't too far off. I was he hot, he got off Sammy, but Sammy took it off Gunther. I don't I don't know. It wasn't terrible. So uh, what do you think, Mark? Yeah, I I mean, I pretty much fully agree with everything you said. It felt like it was time to give Braun the title. Uh, I'm interested to see like what they're going to do with Sammy moving forward. Hopefully, he can kind of get back into like the main event scene with Cody and KO and Randy. Maybe that leads. Maybe we're wrong with like our early War Games prediction. Oh yeah, that's another thing too. They officially announced Survivor Series yeah. War Games. Yeah, War Games. Yep. 
um, which is awesome because it's like every year, I think they're trying to not fully commit to doing war games every every year for Survivor yeah. Series, but I think they're going to try to do it every year that they can. So mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe we'll get Cody, Roman, Randy, Sammy, and KO versus Solo's Bloodline in 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 the war games. Um, although I think they should do the Bloodline versus Bloodline in the war games, but yeah. we'll see because uh, they still have a few months to build to that. But yeah, I mean, Braun's going to hold the title for a very long time. I think that we've had a great run of IC champions from Gunther to Sammy to Braun. I think this is really going to help establish Braun Breaker as like a serious threat. Um, as Not that he necessarily really needed it because he's taken the main roster by storm, obviously. But winning the IC title kind of nudges you up a little farther than you were. And, and it helps kind of solidify everyone's thoughts uh, about him that he is that dude and he is going to be a serious player for wwe for many many years to come i agree i agree i think that he could easily hold this for a year easily he's gonna hold it until wrestlemania especially because they just both mid-card titles um have new champions now too so i think we're gonna get long runs for both of those um I guess we'll I I mean we'll see now with what happens with Jacob Fatu getting hurt um but I don't know what they're going to do with the tag titles with that because DIY uh, had like a month title reign so hopefully they won't have to relinquish them but my thought is that if Fatu is actually going to be out for a little while then they're going to find a way to just have like Tonga Loa um, defend like a free bird, free bird rule. rule yeah um which i'm always about i'm all about the free bird rule um uh, it's uh a rule that isn't used enough in my opinion um I just like agree. the idea of like a a foursome holding the tag titles and just like constantly defending them uh with any combination of the two two of the four uh it's just yeah it's fun so uh, I'm dead, and that's some. I, I honestly think they should do. I, yeah, I think they should. Well, yeah, in a situation like this, especially, and I also think they should probably just do that anyway. Um, I think it just. Um, that's what happened. That's what they always. That's what they ended up always doing with the new day. Um, was like yeah. they let them. All three of them were technically champs. So, but yeah, I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I think on by SmackDown. And uh, we'll probably within the next couple of days, we'll probably figure out some more information on uh, Jacob Fatu. Um, I, I know we saw, I did see that he was in a walking boot after the show, uh, but I mean, he was walking on it. So I think that's a good sign that's overall. A good sign. Yeah, uh, he was in a boot, but he was walking without help from crutches or anything like that. So uh, hopefully it's nothing too serious and uh, he can just rest up a little bit. Uh, because he's been on a tear and uh he's an absolute beast. Yeah. We'll get into that later, but um yeah, I guess what the next match I believe was the US title, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think you're right. Um and Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got yeah. um Logan Paul defending his US title Ooh. against uh the man they call the megastar L A Knight. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he, uh, this match um, was really good, man. This match was a lot of fun. Um, we had like that uh, multiple really fun spots. Uh, Logan, uh, not Logan, uh, LA Knight pulling uh, Logan's goons over the railing and beat him up. Uh, Beat, a, beat the hell out of that goof, Sean, or whatever the hell his <laughs> name was. Um, and then you had uh, the superplex, um, with that like nasty land. It was almost a fucking brain buster. It was crazy. Um, it was basically a brain buster. Yeah, like it was. It was pretty much a brain buster. It was nuts. Um, and then you had that springboard moonsault that Logan hit was nuts. Um, that was so impressive. Dude, honestly, that was crazy. Um, so it, it was a really great match overall and, uh, and the right thing happened and we got, uh, LA Knight finally, finally, finally gets his big win 
um, and is your new United States champion. He more than deserves it. We say it all the time, but the fact that he was able to stay as over as he has been um, without having a big win or a big title, big title win or anything like that is so incredibly impressive. Um, and the fact that he's been able to do that uh, is just even more of a testament as to why he deserves uh, to be your new United States champion. So congrats to LA Knight. I really enjoyed this match. I fully agree. This one of my was favorites. A lot one of, of fun, my favorites of, of the night. A lot of a lot of great spots. Uh, uh, like you said, um, might have I been my like favorite. Kind of. Would now I mean, that I think about it. Top two. Yeah, I think I think it might have been my favorite of the night. I don't know if I would put it over Gunther versus Priest, but yeah, that I think was really probably, for me. There, that one, was an two. absolute banger. But, but anyway. they like. Well, before the match started, he almost couldn't break the windows uh, of Logan's prime truck, which was crazy because, like, I don't know why they gave him that long ass pipe to try to break. Yeah, that was insane. Those, and we were also real like, windows. Uh, well, no, that's what, like, what that's what uh, we, I was watching it, and uh, me and my girlfriend were watching it, and she said, too, she was like, she was like, do they not realize like car windows are built now? She was like, car windows are stronger than they used to be. Like they're built to withstand like just like a, a quick hit with a pipe. So yeah. honestly, kind of impressive that he was able to do it in two. Um, I know. With that, I was just like, oh, give him a yeah, hammer. Yeah, <laughs> just give him something like or that was that a, big absurd. ass pipe. The thing was so work. long. Was, like even just crazy. a short pipe, a short pipe. So he could have just been like that. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. A sledgehammer, a hundred percent, would have should have been the move. Um, but, it's always a sledgehammer. Yeah. Why would you not do a sledgehammer? But but with that I being just thought said, that was funny. That was funny. That would have. <laughs> um, but Helly Knight, man, I'm really happy that he's the new champ. Um, and I think we're in for a really fun title run. Uh, with La Knight as United States champion, and it's a long time coming. Yeah. He deserves it. Yeah, I think we're getting a nice long title run. Hopefully, we get a really some nice feuds in there as well. You know, the U.S. title just hasn't been on television because of Logan Paul. So I think L.A. Knight can kind of really help bring some prestige and honor back to the U.S. title that it felt like it's been missing uh, for for quite some time. So who knows? Like we kind of always say, anytime we get a new U.S. champion, hopefully we'll get some open challenges in the future. Those are always a lot of fun, but. I'm pretty stoked that LA Knight finally gets his big win. He finally gets a title, and that U.S. title looks damn good on LA Knight. So uh, I'm very excited for the future with that. So let's move on because we have a new WWE Women's Champion, Dylan. Mm -hmm. We do, Mark. That being Nia Jax. Yeah, Nia Jax uh, versus Bailey um, delivered on all on in. On all fronts, man. Like Nia Jax versus Bailey was a really good match. I I think they I think they kind of put the doubters uh put the doubters away, man. Like they they uh they really delivered. It was really fun, um, the entire time that that power bomb that Bailey had on Nia Jax was insane. Um, it was awesome. The the way that Nia won at the end with the annihilators, like the way that she was like, that was kind of insane, honestly. Like that was like uh that was like a you knew it was over when that happened. Um and then we yeah. had of of course Tiffy. Uh Tiffy time came down and acted as if she was going to cash in, but uh she was really just trying to help out her girl Nia. And um she know T Tiffany knows that her time will come, she says. Um, and, uh, she, she was just happy to help Nia get the win this time. And, um, yeah, I can't remember my prediction. Um, you picked Nia. Did oh, I? No, yeah. You, you picked, no, yeah. no, you picked Bailey. I was going to say, um, I probably should have picked Nia though. Said, well, cause you said that, um, you were kind of like heavy on that. Like it wouldn't surprise you if Nia won and that you were like, kind of like almost yeah. leaning towards but you did end up picking um, Bailey. No, yeah, also, I mean I, that one was definitely the hardest one to predict, in my opinion. Um, like I thought that one could have gone either way, the more than any other match. Um, but I really, 
I really am not disappointed with the result because um, if we're being honest, Naya has been one of the, if not the best rehire by Triple H. Um, she's really delivered, man, like honestly. Um, and, and the feud with Bailey was honestly pretty good. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where we go from here. Um, but you know, I'm I'm not I'm not totally disappointed at all by this uh by Nia Jax winning the title here, to be honest. So what do you think that you think Bailey's gonna try to immediately get her title back? Yeah, I think that's probably what you have to do at first. Um And then I wonder what she's gonna do kinda after that. Who, Bailey or Nia? Yeah. Bailey. Um hmm. I think Bailey would be a really she's not I mean, rumors are that uh, they're they're going to be introducing mid card titles to the women. Um, Bailey isn't a bad choice at all to be an inaugural mid card champion, um, just to like put some respect on that title. Um, so I don't know that that's something we could do down the line. Maybe we can um, make a video about that on like, uh, you know, doing uh, who we think could be like the first five mid card champions for the women or and stuff like that uh and hopefully it is something they do um but i mean that's obviously zero confirmation on whether that's going to happen or not that's just a random thought so it'll be interesting to see what bailey does i'm not 100 percent sure um but i definitely think uh this feud probably isn't over yeah i i think it'll probably last a little longer i think we're getting at least one more yeah do you think you think Tiff is going to win the title next off of Naya via cash in? Probably. Um, I think that is probably a good way to put Tiff over as a baby face. Um, you know what I mean? A situation where Naya maybe is like bossing her around a little too much or something and uh, then Tiff ends up cashing in, and then um, and then I really wouldn't be surprised if uh, Tiff is your champ going into WrestleMania next year. And um, because I, I a big part of me really thinks that we're gonna get Tiffany Stratton versus Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania for the uh, for the championship. So we'll see what happens. But I think yeah, I, I would Tiff wins the title before the year's done. Yeah. I think that's probably a good call. Cause I think she goes up, I think she goes into Royal Rumble as the champion. I agree. I think that they're going to give people enough time to buy the briefcase, which you can get for pre order currently. And yeah. that once kind of give it a couple of months, uh, and then you have Tiff turn on Naya via cash in and mm-hmm. uh let Tiff hold it for a good amount of time. So let's move on to Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. Drew McIntyre got the win. I really enjoyed uh, this match. So lot. did I. A lot of people thought it was a little bit sloppy, but I thought it was a, a kind of some. I thought I thought it was kind of beautiful chaos. Like it was. Um, this match was never meant to be um, a super clean wrestling match. Um, it's there's too much heat and there's too much animosity in the feud for it to just be like a masterpiece of a match. Um, yeah, like there's just there needs to be too much aggression and and just punches thrown and and just strikes and things like that. Um, and then in the end, uh, CM Punk was uh, his own downfall and he he couldn't focus on Drew McIntyre and he got too worried about Seth Rollins and um, he costed him the match. And geez, I I swear it felt like we were, um, felt like we were behind the scenes of a con, and we were in in on a conversation. Like it felt like we weren't supposed to. Like obviously, I know we were supposed to hear the conversation between Seth Rollins and CM Punk, but it almost yeah. felt wrong to be hearing it. You're like, <laughs> dude, these le- these guys legit fucking do not like each other, man. Like, yeah. Um, like, dude, like you could hear the passion behind Seth saying it's not always about you, asshole. Like, <laughs> like you, he meant every single word of that. Um, and this feud is cooking, man. 
uh, and the right person won. Drew needed to get the win here. He's been taking way too many L's. Punk's gotten over on him too many times, and I like the way it happened. I think it's smart uh, uh, that Punk kind of costed himself in the end um, and couldn't just focus on Drew and was too worried about Seth. And um, yeah. I'm really, I'm really curious to see where this where they go at this point because obviously we're not done um but the triple threat or seth versus punk kind of just feels bigger than berlin um so i don't know maybe we'll get a rematch drew and punk again at bad blood maybe and then after that that'll lead to um survivor series yeah who knows man where we end up going with it because um but i mean we're gonna get some form of a match between the three men um between punk rollins and and drew uh in the next coming months again so but i i i really enjoyed it and like you said i i think it, they made the right call yeah, I mean, I, I also really liked, I think, like, the way that Seth refereed this did, he did it really well with, like, kind of getting involved, but not really getting involved, but still yeah. calling, like, very... Yeah, he called fairly, it down the middle. Had some shenanigans here and there, but, like, it, it wasn't too much. Obviously, he had that great blow-up uh, when CM Punk got pissed at him. Yeah. And he was just like, you don't belong here! That was awesome. I think... Um, and the good thing with like when Seth put on the bracelet was like, cause that's just kind of like the refs pick up stuff that that's on the ring. Uh, it's like part of their job to make sure the mat's clean. So no one trips over or anything. So like him doing that. And then he's like, yeah, like that's legitimately something that like a, a ref would do. They probably wouldn't wear it, but you know, obviously he had to wear it, but it's just like, I think they did that really well as opposed to doing something else. That was maybe a bit more obvious that Seth was trying to cost CM Punk the match. I think that we get the rematch between Drew and Punk at some point. I don't know if that happens. It doesn't feel like it happens at Bash at Berlin because I think they're only going to do five matches for that. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe at Bad Blood, but I think we get that singles match. Probably Seth costing one of them or maybe just having it be like a no contest or whatever. And then I think the culmination of this is the triple threat match um, in the end. I think that's going to be the last of like the, the feud between the three of them. And then I think we get into CM Punk and Seth Rollins. Yeah. Uh, that so, could, yeah, that could potentially main event us bad blood. Um, but who knows? Uh, I would know Cody's main event in bad blood. Uh, Cause it's in Atlanta. Uh, so <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. But anyway, uh, let's jump up to the next match, Mark. Um, Damian Priest defending his World Heavyweight Championship against Da Ring General Gunta. Um, what an absolute <laughs> banger of a match, dude. These men beat the hell out of each other. Like, holy hell. Um, yeah, it was awesome. It was not long at all bef until uh, into this match, and Gunther was busted open on his chest from the slaps of Damian Priest and the chops. Um, Damian Priest looking absolute jacked, by the way. I think this is probably the most like strongest he's looked. Jeez, that guy is looking uh, looking huge, man. Good for him. But uh, yeah, just. These men like truly beat the shit out of each other. Um, and it was so fun to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, was, this one was a blast. Yeah, dude, it was so much fun. Um, and Damien, I think this this feud with Guther, um, it's unfortunate that he lost the title so quickly into it because, um, and, and I say that because I, I think he's like been doing his best work as a champion so far in this feud. Um, so it was really, really, really cool. And then, of course, we have to get into what happened. Um, 
the the SummerSlam 2024 will forever be known as the implosion of the Judgment Day. Um, it seems like Damien uh, just pushed Finn a little bit too far, and he finally snapped. Um, Finn was tired of being talked down to by Damien a little bit. Um, Finn felt like Damien was being a little bit too controlling, uh, trying to uh, not show Finn enough respect. Um, and Finn ended up uh, costing Damien the match when Damien had it won, man. Damien had this thing won, and then uh, Finn pulled Gunther's uh Gunther's leg onto the rope and uh from there it was uh really really uh it it, it was the end of the judgment day pretty much man because we had Dom in the beginning of the night there uh turning on Rhea and siding with Liv and then Finn turns on Damien um yeah and it feels like the judgment day is uh over and maybe one day we'll get a judgment day reunion who knows um, and that will probably be cool. Uh, but uh, it's going to be really exciting to see uh, where things go from here. And with that being said, uh, I'm so happy for Gunther. He deserves it. Um, he 100% is is more than deserving. I think we're in for a great reign as champion. Bash in Berlin with Gunther as world champion. You know that's main eventing. And oh, that yeah. is going to be incredible it's going to be absolutely electric um do you think we probably get the rematch the damien gunther rematch that's what i was trying to figure out for, like, i think what so they're gonna do at bash i think for bash they do that and then i think bad blood is probably where we go to finn and damien um because i mean damien earned is entitled to a rematch um, and even more so being that part of the uh, clause the, and, and even more so being that Finn, uh, even though even more so being that he had the match won pretty much. Uh, so uh, he definitely is going to get that. And listen, and I'm not mad at it at all because of how fun that match is, how fun yeah. that match was. And I think at Bash in Berlin, like they might even go like even hard, like it might. even. Oh, be they'll more. go harder. Like it'll they'll be even harder. more of a banger. So yeah. uh, I'm I'm completely completely fine with that uh what what was your thoughts mark are you happy with this result and uh where do you think we go from here i was um pretty i mean listen you know the burning hammer boys we love us some damien priest um mm -hmm. no one's happier for for that guy than us um to me it just felt like that like it was time because it was just like kind of how things lined up. I think they were just like, as soon as Gunther dropped the IC title, they were kind of just like waiting to put that world heavyweight title on him. So I think we'll definitely get another Priest world title run, but I think it's the right call. I think they did it in the right way. And I am extremely excited for Gunther to hold this big gold 2.0 for north of a year because he looks so good with this title, man. Banger after banger after banger. And he's going to have one hell of a run i think we're going to get i think they're more focused on like the quality and the longevity of gunther's title runs as opposed to trying to throw you have him win the belt 10 times in like three years like they're going to be like this guy he may only win it a handful of times but all that times that he's won it he's it's going to end up being like 10 years worth you know what he should you know what they should give us what? They should just give us Gunther and Ilya at, at Bash. Bash. Yes. They might. Like Gunther and Ilya, or maybe Gunther and Pete Dunn, or something. Like, probably not Pete Dunn, but Gunther and Ilya would just be sick. Just give us something. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with Gunther and Damien, too, but um, that crowd would go nuts for Gunther and Ilya. Um, yeah, I mean, and they can do it, too. Like, Ilya can just come interrupt his segment on yeah. Raw tonight. And he could just be like, I beat you for, I ended your title reign before in NXT UK. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think that could be um, a lot of fun. That's where I'm just like, I don't know if they're going to, like, I don't, it's, I don't know if we're going to get the rematch immediately because, again, I don't know if Priest is going to try to take off Finn Balor's head. Or if he's going to, yeah. I need to win my title back first, and then I'm going after Finn. But 
who knows? Maybe it's a situation where Finn and JD just keep beating the shit out of him and uh, they kind of injure him backstage. So they got to wait for him to get his rematch. And then maybe at Bad Blood, we get that that rematch. Or who knows? Maybe we just don't get that rematch at all. But I think Damian Priest deserves to to get his rematch. So let's move on to the main event. Because this was Bloodline Rules. Mm-hmm. And we had the return of the original Tribal Chief. The original, the one, and the only Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. Let's uh, go. No wise man, though. No wise man with Roman no Reigns. No wise man. Didn't really fit the situation. Um, So, that's fine. Uh, I'm sure... I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see the wise man on Friday. Um, so I think um, I think we, like Cody said in the press conference, Roman Reigns did not do that to help Cody Rhodes. He did that because of what's going on with him and Silla, though. Um, so the third match between Cody and Roman is there, and it's happening some point down the line. It's unavoidable. It needs to happen. Um, so, but... With that being said, the way the match kind of played out, kind of similar to the WrestleMania match, and that, you know, we get uh, Tongaloa and uh, Tama Tonga coming out, and then KO and Randy come out to the rescue to help uh, help Cody, and then um, we have Cody uh, looking like he might get the win, and then we get Jacob Fatu. And um, I don't know if this was just because of what happened when... So then Jacob Fatu puts Cody through the table, um, and then and he seems to get hurt on it. Um, seems to hurt his ankle. Um, it seemed like he was in legit pain. I, I think that was a real injury. I don't think that was planned. Um, yeah. I think they just kept him out there uh, because they were like, all right, well, it's not like fucking shattered like can you stay out here like we we don't want to cart you to the back like you're gonna look weak as like we want you to be a absolute beast um and it was also kind of a way to like leave to not have him get squashed by roman um so that like that was do you think roman was gonna take out fatu i don't know i really don't know part of me thinks maybe jay yeah part of me thinks it was it might have been jay or maybe even jimmy yeah. Um, but then at the same time, I'm like, would they have wanted to like take out Fatu like that? They like, they obviously think so highly of him, man. Like the way Triple H I talks will- about him, like I think Fatu's a world champion in the future. So like, it's confusing, uh, honestly, but nonetheless, it- sorry. Well, I don't think it would have been a situation of like someone neutralizing Fatu I think it would have been like Jay would have came out and then they would have been fighting. And then it would have been like Fatu was then focused on Jay more than like the match. Like, yeah, I don't no, think it I know. Been like, so, and then like, but I mean, either way, I don't know if anyone else was necessarily I, supposed to It was come probably out. Jay more than Jimmy. I think if anybody, it was probably Jay. Um, or maybe Jimmy. I don't know, man. Uh, I think <laughs> Jay makes more sense in my opinion. But actually, no, he doesn't really. I think Jimmy honestly makes more sense because he got taken out, and that would be the more unexpected uh, help that uh, Cody would be getting. But then, of course, we got the Tribal Chief. And just like we said, that pop, man, that pop, (laughs) probably the greatest pop of all time, man. Um, Yeah. Welcome back, Roman Reigns. We missed you. You have been so incredibly sorely missed. Um, so good to have the tribal chief back. Uh, he's definitely going to have to be on SmackDown this week. Um, yes. So, I mean, SmackDown is going to be a must watch this week to see what happens uh, regarding the bloodline and Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes and, and, you know, where things are moving forward. Um, also, I think 
that we are in store for one incredible ride with the bloodline. Um, it is going to be crazy to see where this goes. And with the announcement of war games, it feels like we need a bloodline civil war in war games. Um, God, it's the only way that yeah. this can end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I also wanted, Oh, also dude, that was easily the biggest and loudest. Ooh, ah, that we have Ooh. ever heard, dude. That was definite. That was it was crazy, dude. It was nuts. Like that was <laughs> so crazy. Um, that was crazy. It was either, like the loudest that we've ever heard, dude. It was so loud, like so loud. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. Jeez, it was so awesome. Um, and you know, there you go. Cody got the W. Um, and. He uh, and he he looked at Roman Reigns like we said. He tapped on the belt with three fingers. He knew that that third match has to happen at some point, and he knew that that Roman did not do that because they're friends. Um, he did that because uh of what's going on with Solo right now, uh, trying to claim the title of Tribal Chief. Um, but overall, man, what was your review of this show? I thought SummerSlam was an absolute banger, man. I had so much fun with this show. Um, easily the best show, the best PLE since Mania Night 2. Easy, um, I'd say. And I guess that's probably how it should be um, when you're doing the big ones. So I, I was really happy with it. I fully agree. I thought it was a lot of fun. Obviously, we had a lot of memorable moments. Um, there wasn't a single bad match on the card. I think every match was above average. Um, so that's like there wasn't even like no match was good. Every match was at least great uh, on this card. And we got a ton of memorable moments. We obviously got the return of the original Tribal Chief four years after he made his return. Wreck everyone and leave. Uh, and, and so... The implosion yeah. of the Judgment Day. Implosion of the Judgment Day. We got some new champions. champions. So it was really a big night uh, to shift the uh, the landscape from WWE moving forward. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens. Yeah, I think, dude, this Bloodline stuff's really going to start to pick up now. And it's going to be interesting to kind of see like where they kind of go from here. Where it's like, when are we going to get Roman versus Solo? How's that stuff going to work with like the two bloodlines clashing? When are Jimmy and Jay going to uh, reunite with each other? So uh, especially in everything you have with the Judgment Day on Monday Night Raw and you have the Wyatt Six making their in-ring debut actually tonight, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, against Chad Gable and the Creed Brothers. Um, so it, it's a good time to be a wrestling fan. There's a lot of great stuff on weekly. And I'll tell you what, they know how to make you want to tune in every single week to Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown because they make these shows much wa must watch. And, and um, I'm, I'm super pumped for everything they have to offer moving forward. Uh, we have a few more weeks until Bash in Berlin, which is going to be a fun card. And then we have Bad Blood and then Survivor Series War Games. So it's going to be a hot run for WWE to close out the year and um, just enjoy the ride because it's going to be awesome. So um, that's going to wrap up this episode of the podcast. Like we said at the top, if you want to buy our merch, click the link in the description. Uh, we have six designs currently out right now, uh, including this sweet T-shirt that I got on. What? Look at that. What? Sweet tie-dye, dude. Whoa. The burning hammer, dude. That's like such a dope shirt, man. Cool as hell. Yeah, you want to look hot as hell? Wear our merch. You want to impress that person you like? Wear our merch. Uh, and then if you want to sign up for a Patreon, again, one singular dollar a month. I mean, it's Hop going to be on before bucks. we blow up. And, and, and it's yeah. going to be crazy, man. People are going to be uh, knocking. We're going to have to turn away Patreon members um, <laughs> in, in, the, in the future. We're going to have to say, listen, dude, we got no more room on the Patreon. <laughs> um, we're going to have to charge so much, uh, but even when that happens, 
our day ones who sign up for one dollar will be grandfathered in and they'll keep that one dollar tier um so uh so for all our day ones uh if you want some extra content we really appreciate it uh go out and show your support uh tell your friends about the burning hammer and whatnot um so yeah that's enough for me yeah i mean and, and again the stuff on our patreon it's all ad free and then you get it uh early and we'll be throwing a bunch of other stuff on there like um maybe some behind the scenes stuff like i said at the top you'll catch a new video from mark uh me unboxing my two wrestling t-shirts that i got plus if you want to see our new design um, we'll give you a sneak peek, early access to see it uh, today on Monday for when it comes out on Wednesday. So again, there's no reason not to sign up for our Patreon. One dollar a month, great way to help support the boys. With that being said, I'm Mark Izzo. He is Dylan O'Brien. And this has been another episode of the Burning Hammer Podcast. We'll catch you next week. Next week.